Today is about the importance of time and price as an indication of market cycles. If we've learnt anything from 2022, timing the highs and lows can be heavily dependent upon previous market cycles, such as the 60-year or the four-year presidential cycle. Then we look at how the commodities are holding up. Gary Glover from Novus Capital is guiding us through the markets. Good morning, Gary. How are you? Good on, great, Chris. How are you going? I'm happy to see uh, we're in December. 2022 has been a stellar year. Uh, you rarely give credit to yourself, so I'm going to give it to you. You've absolutely nailed it with the highs and the lows. And as we had there in the intro, the 60-year and four years have been instrumental for you picking those. The portfolio speaks for itself. Stellar returns, huge returns for the last few months and a couple of years now that you've been running this more publicly. When we go through the report today, um, you're talking about you've touched on 60 years and four year cycles previously, which we can kind of have a link on on screen and in the notes below. But that sort of leads into the, the charts that you've got, the highs and the lows that you're leading towards. And if I read the report correctly this week, are we possibly coming in for a bit of a breather or a mild pullback or what's on the cards now in December? Yeah, so look, I've cut my portfolios back roughly a third. So I sort of um, tried to sort of take a lot of the higher beta sort of stuff off, you know, sort of stuff that moves the most. Um, so, yeah, just just locked in a bit of profit there, sort of, sort of the, probably the, um, the stuff, that, <laughs> stuff that's going to move. Um, either for me or against me, sort of big. Um, and um, but yeah, because we're sort of we are approaching a bit of a key window here. This sort of first second week in December, that's that's typically when a lot of the highs come in for this, as you say, the mid term year cycle. Um, also the 20 year and the 60 year cycle as well, which has sort of been um, <clears throat> the cycles I've been looking at there. So just just a lot of uniformity, um, in how we run there and just just cycles within cycles as well. So just told me to be pretty careful here. Just a lot of um, early December highs here in this sort of midterm year. Um, so the conflict I've got here is a 60-year cycle just really, you know, is sort of suggesting we'll just get a congestion. We'll get a little bit of a pause here, not too deep pullback, whereas our 20-year cycle, um, it did have a pretty decent pullback there. If you remember back to that 2002 high, it actually only came back about three quarters of the move made a higher low in uh, March and then and then that was the sort of the bull market sort of continued from there. That was really our first higher low. So we've got two of the probably strongest cycles, which has sort of probably been our, you know, been sort of the, you know, the roadmap to sort of follow there. Just indica indicating there we'll get a bit of a pause here. Just what's what's up for conjecture here is whether we just get a little pause there. Um Oftentimes what happens is December sort of will just sort of go sideways and then maybe you'll get a little pullback into January and then sort of find a, you know, a low in February or March there. Or otherwise you might get a deeper pullback um, and then, then head on from there. So that's, that's, the, only, that's the only question that, that, I've, that, that I sort of see here. So we didn't quite get to 4,200 on the S&P. I thought we might have gotten higher there. Um, you still, still might do, Chris. There, that I actually had a look at the volumes last night on the Dow, Nasdaq, and the S and P. And although we had quite wide ranges last night, the volumes were quite light. So, I think um, across all the indices, there, the, the volume was not was not heavy. So, um, not you know, I would have thought a big day down like that, five hundred points there might have been, particularly wide range and a bit of coming off there. Might, might have seemed like a distribution day, but it wasn't even, a, you know, the, the, the volumes were considerably lighter than the previous sort of week or two on the way up here. So not no high conviction selling there last night, even though we had a decent move down here. So that, <clears throat> you know, that might sort of favour conjecture. So I, I'm probably sort of sitting in the middle here, sort of thinking a mild pullback is what might be likely there. And... Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big believer in sort of geometry and markets as well, sort of just having a look at the shape of how you trade in and out of moves. That those sort of will give you your best sort of guidance here. So I'm not favouring a big pullback there. I think um, the market's looking okay here. Just just might get a little bit of a pause here and a little bit of congestion there. So I think it might be a bit of a messy December, maybe pull back a little further back after January. And then maybe early February there, we might see a little bit of a low there. And then... That hopefully might be the time to pin the ears back and get 
even more aggressive on the on the upside there. And that's maybe when sort of growth can sort of um, get a bit more, um, uh, you know, a bit, bit more of a push there. Obviously, growth sort of um, has. I know some of the stocks we've done, <coughs> I've chosen here, have done pretty well, but largely a lot of the growth stocks probably have underperformed here, and that Nasdaq has underperformed. So. Um, yeah, so just after that, oh, that may change early next year. Okay, well, that's that's a good insight to go into the end of the year, coming in with sort of sitting two more likely scenarios. If we have a look at the Aussie, that is a little bit different. You have said for some time, and it's heavily laden with the commodities sort of sitting in there. We've got the BHP, Rio, big heavyweights, and then all the way through the mid and small caps as well. Now, he had heavy weeks last week with a MISCI rebalance, skyrocketing volumes into the close on one of the days. But you also noticed there was a bit of distribution going on in the Aussie market. So is that changing your outlook on the Aussie or does that sort of play out to the same sort of possibilities as the US markets? Yeah, I think the fact that we've had a pretty decent move up, up and a pretty high in the range there. And um, just that volume increasing last week, and there was definitely a few down days there with a bit of volume in there. So starting to see a little bit of a distribution sort of sign here. Um, the commodities is really the tricky part to me. I think <clears throat> like the banks look like they're really extended to me. So they look a little vulnerable to me. They look pretty stretched here. So I think the banks can sort of cool off. Some of the industrials have had pretty good moves. Um, so they could have a little pause there. So some of them still look quite good to me. So again, pretty mixed sort of market there. Um, but the commodities is really the one that <clears throat> that's the sort of tricky one that I that I sort of see here. Just in the past here, the commodities have sort of meant the normal cycle, you know, as, as often meant our market will find a low a bit later on. And commodities tend to find lows in this cycle a few months after equities. So um and we are you know very heavily orientated. And that's just growing too. That 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 weight has grown, you know, with the you know, with the lithium shares and all those sort of stocks and, you know, coal and, you know, they're all, you know, miners have sort of had success here. So the market caps of those companies have grown and, and the number, you just need to look through the, you know, if you go through, I, I look at all the new IPOs and stuff for the last year and stuff there, that's, that's you know, there'll be, a, you know, I don't know, maybe 50, 60% might be in that resource and commodity space. So, um, yeah, so it just makes up a heavy weight here. So just, if, you know, the fear I've got here is that that you know, the inflation does start to get out of control, then, then that commodity, you know, prices could have a decent pullback here. Um, already seems basically sort of the oil price start to cool off here, but yeah, but I don't know the, the commodity the commodity space is the trickiest part here to me, sort of um, because as we know in, in high inflationary environments, you know, we know commodities can can outperform here, so um. Yeah, just just making that a bit, a bit of a tricky read here at the moment. Just be interesting to see which which sort of cycle runs here. Whether this inflation cycle, which is pushing the prices up here now, whether that can last or not. Well, that's inflation is definitely something that has been on the forefront of everyone's mind. Cost of living pressures going up, and a large part of that is also what you mentioned in the energy and the oil prices. This week in the report, you picked up a few of the energy companies and some gold companies, which will be some good charts to look at. The first one you've put in the report here, we're just going to scroll down to see Woodside or the old Woodside Petroleum, now Woodside Energy. I can see on the left-hand side, you've pointed out one, two, three before a previous high. And then you've got one, two, three, four. Are these overlapping highs or something else going on here? Yeah, so this sort of broadening top pattern or basically what often I think McLaren used to refer to as a three thrust sort of pattern there. You often sort of get, you know, you've been running for quite a while and then you get like a three overlapping highs there. So we think about trends, a trend that sort of sits on top of each other and just sort of builds, that's a normal trend. And then a trend that sort of doesn't pull back to the old high leaf space, that's an aggressive trend. Um, and then you get these vertical trends, which are the strongest trends, which we've, had, we've seen from things like coal stocks and that. But then once a stock or index starts to overlap, so the highs and lows overlapping, that's, that's, a, that's not a strong trend, that's actually a weak trend because you're sort of overlapping in nature. And then, yeah, that that trend will resolve itself in one way. Is it'll either, you know, pull back, sit on top of the high, and then go, or it'll break down, make a lower high, and then roll over. So, 
But these sort of broadening tops are always, they're quite bearish. You see them actually on the commodities. So BHP and Rio are, are littered with these sort of three thrust. And sometimes you can get a fourth. You know, I think BHP and I think the BHP chart we've shown a few, we've seen probably in the last 10 years, we've probably seen three of these. So I think two of them had three thrust and then um, the other one had a fourth like, like this. Um, so it can be quite bearish here. So seeing a bit of volume too, Chris, as well on that. Um, distribution as well, sort of on this sort of sell down here. So that's a, just a bit of a bearish indication to me um, for the stock team. We've seen obviously the oil price cool off a bit as well, but we start to see this oil stock sort of, you know, start to break down here. Um, it's funny, often the uh, stocks often, often um, lead the indices. So like, you know, if gold's going to go for a run, you normally see gold stocks pop before you see gold pop, you know, so... And the same with all stocks as well. So you'll often see all stocks pop before the oil price pops, you know. So they tend to lead the actual physical commodity all the time. So just interesting here, we got a little bit of a bearish sign. But, um, yeah, just got to watch these here. Obviously, again, we've got this high inflationary period, which is, can be good for energy prices and stuff as well. But just am seeing signs of distribution there. And that is a bearish technical pattern. So, um, yeah. So just but that, you know, this, this, this could be good things. This, this is really, you know, could be setting up here for next year. So if that is bearish and we get a pullback there, and obviously some of these commodities start to cool off, then that, that'll be good for inflation. And then our market can, can get on with growth and we can get back to a normal market cycle next year. So that, that could be the, you know, the positive lining there. Um, so Santos chart, which is the next one, is probably more, this one here was sort of, you know, probably kind of broken an uptrend line. Doesn't have too many touches there, so it's not super valid there. But we do have this sort of rolling over or sort of rounding sort of top um, with that sort of um, the nature of it. And then we've got this sort of lower, you know, um, double top here. So one thing, you know, <clears throat> double tops and double bottoms, Chris, aren't very reliable patterns. The failure rate's actually pretty high. If you ever read Bolkowski, who's, who's basically done a statistical analysis of Five years of the S and P five hundred found that that's yeah quite a quite a high failure rate. What's more, and what's what's got a, a much more valid rate is actually is if you sort of see a low, <clears throat> and then you get a, a higher double bottom, or if you see a high and you see a lower double top coming off the high, that is much more valid there. So if you look at the if you look at the bottom of that chart there, see how in um. 2020, we came, we got we got a low in place, then we rallied up to you know six bucks there or something, and then we came back and made a little double bottom in October there. So a little double bottom there. So that's that's that is much more reliable pattern. So that, that that's a tradable pattern there. So little our double bottom following a uh, uh, you know a low is much more reliable than just a normal double bottom double top there pattern. And the same on the way down here. So we've got our high in place. We've had an impulsive leg down. And then we've had now a corrective overlapping sideways move here, a little double double top, which follows, you know, which is basically like a lower high. Again, a much more reliable pattern. Look at the last four weeks of volume on, on Santos as well. So that's a bit of concern as well. So that's that's a little negative for me. So so these are pretty these are much more reliable patterns. Um, signs of distribution there. Um, so, yes, yeah, so just some negative signs there for some of those energy stocks, the two main players there. But that could be, you know, although it looks negative for them, that could actually be, you know, what gets us you know, the market going next year. Well, you know, if they start, if they sort of continue to move lower here and all price moves lower, some of the inflation measures start to cool off here. But that, that can be good for, um, for equities for next year. That is something you said quite a lot. If we just have that print come in a little bit lower, maybe lower than expectations or lower than previous prints, that's what the 40s and 70s have told us. When it drops off mm. a little bit, that market can rally. Is that yeah. uh, is that a good summary of what you've said before? Yeah, yeah. I see. It. I see. It. I mean, I, <clears throat> I do follow the kook and a few other economists online there. And there's a, like a few of them are pretty, you know, they're supportive of the RBA being pretty behind the wheel here. On, um, on moving rates, whereas every other central bank in the world knows exactly 
how detrimental um, inflation can be. So they're really trying to get in front of inflation, move it down. Whereas, whereas our guy here has just been behind the wheel. But they all think this is just going to disappear. That you know, inflation going to disappear. <laughs> I hope they're right. But history tells me that's that's a lower percentage move. So I mean, I I really want to see all these elements. Yeah, you know, energy prices start to cool. Just a lot of the inflation measures start to cool off here. We we really don't want to have three years, five years, eight years of high inflation. It's just just detrimental to to everyone, to the economy, to, to everything. So um, even equity markets. And I, I know we can still make money. Um, you know, we've seen historically what 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 does work in those periods, and you can still make money if you're in the right sectors there. But it'll be a lot more prosperous if we can get inflation down. Markets can can probably rally a lot stronger, you know. So that's what we really want to see. So that's why I think it's important to get, you know, uh, most central bankers around the world now waking up and realise they really need to, you know, even if it means a little bit of short-term pain for, um, you know, for people, it's much more important to get that inflation genie, you know, under control because that, you know, the short-term pain will be nothing as compared to like a three or five or eight years of constant pain. That'll that'll absolutely um, hurt a lot more. Um, <clears throat> gold stocks, um, those are the next charts there. They they're really um, <clears throat> they're flying here, Chris. So the volumes, um, you know, we saw volume occurring there, sort of from August. So really high, sort of um, massive, sort of volume. So almost sort of signs of accumulation taking place. And then we've seen a bit of an impulsive move, some pretty strong volume. Seen a little bit of a you know the pullbacks were sort of lighter volume pushing through again here so seeing some good signs there actually so mm-hmm. as i sort of said um high inflation periods of the past we've normally seen you know energy <laughs> value stocks and gold so gold's the only one not playing ball here so maybe it sort of started to sort of come to the party here so it does look interesting there they're sort of starting to move some, some of them had some pretty big moves already so you might see a little you know a few little pauses and stuff there but yeah, I think it's, I just think it looks pretty constructive here. So um, definitely watching the gold sector here. Um, I know sort of we alluded to this on your thirty thirty report there on Fridays. There we sort of you know we had so many gold stocks come into the into the you know, the, the weekly. Um, There's launch pads first off. They just, yeah, they're was, all coming in early. There must have been four or six or you know eight or something in the, in that one week, and then then we had a few. In, our, in the quarterly uh, momentum. And then we've seen gold stocks constantly sort of in there for the last sort of month here. So um, just some good signs here that, you know, these stocks are sort of starting to lead here. So, um, yeah, look, probably let us down a little bit in the past here. So I I do, um, <laughs> I am a little suspicious of them. I can't, I just, they can't let you down, but um, this is the best I've, I've, I've seen that book here. So actually, it's getting a bit of volume there. People are actually starting to talk about gold as well, which is interesting as well. So a lot of people are sort of starting to warm um, to gold and seeing even a few brokers actually recommend exposure there, which is sort of interesting. So, but yeah, it does does look quite good. Well, that's Newcrest, which is the main one most people <clears> will start off looking at when they're looking for a gold company to trade on the ASX. Another one a bit further down, and you've traded this one successfully in the past, Silver Lake. Now, there's like we can see a significant pullback here, a bit of a rally, a smaller pullback, and a higher low rally, sort of just false break, but pulling back, but a much higher low, smaller rally. Could that be a VCP, or we've got a few things going on here? Yeah, no, exactly. So, I mean, the two things that are obvious to me is that you know, look at the volume on the on the way up here on the rally. So, really strong volume off that first sort of rally, and then pull back on lighter volume. And then we're seeing volume spike on each of those runs so far. So we've definitely we've seen the volume, you know, come into the moves here on the way up here and dry up on the pullback here. So that's really constructive. And then yeah, yeah as you rightly put out, that's a nice VCP there. The first pullback is sort of a you know modest sort of size. Second pullback a bit smaller. Third pullback smaller again. So each pullback's getting tiny and tiny, all, all on light volume. And then we're popping through on pretty strong volume. So. Nice BCP there, nice little break there. Um, so yeah, it does does look pretty positive there. So it might get a bit of congestion here, but um, but yeah, it does signs are pretty good there. So <clears throat> just overall seeing some decent signs there for a lot of the gold stocks. I said some of them had some big moves already, but um, so you might get some consolidations here, but definitely a sector to to keep an eye on here. 
I think if we see any sort of pauses, any little pennants and flags and stuff there where they have a breather on light volume, there could be some decent sort of um, signs in there. So it's definitely a sector I'll be watching here with, you know, particularly with the market looking a little vulnerable, a little, you know, I think a little cautious here for a bit of a breather. Um, we got to try and find some sectors that are going to be um, heading up here while, while possibly a majority might be um, having a bit of a pause or a pullback here. Okay, well, that's a good one to keep if we're lightening the load into the market like you have been doing with the portfolio, pairing back those higher risk positions, putting some commodities in there, and this is top of that watch list. If we stay with that commodity side of things, the exposure to the metal prices, you've got a broad one in here with Sims where they've got uh, exposure to a fair few different commodities. What's happening here on this chart? It's just had a, um, two things there. I mean, it's had a, had a pretty big decline. It's sort of come back more than 50% from its highs there. And and also that $12 region there is just a massive, massive support line there. Look how we've had quite a few touches in the past. We've even had an old high there as well. Um, so it's a big, big technical level. And then we swap, what we saw at the, at the low there, we saw a little false break didn't follow through and then we saw a nice reversal on pretty good volume there so sort of signs of accumulation there so I think this looks quite good here sort of you know obviously if you can buy it closer to 12 uh, maybe in the mid or high 12s and stuff there with a nice sort of tight stop there um, that might be that might be decent there but I think this looks you know looks looks quite good actually um, considering here what's um, everything else going on in the market there so I don't, I don't mind the look at that and uh, if we go from one side of the market to another, you've been talking about commodities. We go into that, well, I was going to say high growth, but looking at the chart and the company, unfortunately, it's not high growth, but it is in that tech space. Mm. So this has been on the nose for some time. What's this pattern? Yeah, so look, catching? it's um, interesting here, just because just we've had a like nice impulsive bounce there, and that bounce came in on some pretty good volume. The only thing I would have liked to have seen is the last three or four weeks on the pullback, would love to have seen that volume been a lot lighter. There's a couple of days in there lighter, but yeah, but that's the only thing I, I would have loved to have seen that dry up a bit more, but I still think this is sort of positive, the fact that it's sort of consolidation there. It's interesting, I think that this week here is um, Iris have suspended some of the platforms as well, that they were sort of they were running <clears throat> um, for people there. So some of the, um, not the. Oh, yeah, the trader, one. Yeah. yeah, there's a trader platform there. So it sort of forced people off the of platform. So they've made a few changes there, which is probably, I know a few traders out there were unhappy with, with that. But um, but yeah, it's um, obviously for obviously for financial reasons for us so um but um but but yeah just uh yeah i just thought that looked pretty interesting here it's sort of um markets are still fairly buoyant pretty volatile i think it's still a reasonable environment for um you know things like the asx and fund managers and stuff there so you're just going to see a bit of volatility here but i just i say that, that that wasn't a too bad a chat last time we sort of did have a little bit of a pop in a consolidation there it did sort of follow through and that Funny enough, that last little consolidation I, I highlighted in 2021, the volume didn't really drop off there either. So, um, so it sort of did sort of stay constant through that little pullback there. So, but yeah, I thought that wasn't um, probably one of one of the better looking charts I sort of saw there. But other than that, I thought most of the I thought the financials were looking pretty stretched here. They're pretty high here, and come back near what one one oh eight one ten. So a pretty big multiple there coming into a maybe environment where you're sort of going to see interest rates move a little, little higher there. Um, you're already seeing the housing market drop a little bit, so you think there should be potentially some pressures there. Um, and, um, yeah, um, so, yeah, I just think, I just yeah, interesting sort of week here, but I, I've, you know, I was actually hoping to get back to sort of 50% exposure there to the market there, just sort of... Um, you know, chop a, a bit more out here, actually, look a bit more profit in there. So um, might might just need to take a bit more time here. Look, oftentimes the markets, are, you know, they can be reasonably buoyant around Christmas. Everyone's expecting a Christmas rally. I, I don't think there will be a Christmas rally, but I think it might hang on here. It might just, it can be kind of messy 
in, in December just because of that um, you know, lower trading volumes and um, people tend to go away, so there's less institutional money sort of um, at work. Um, but, yeah, it could just be a bit of a messy December ahead here. Well, that's good. Um, good way to take it into the end of the year. Good summary for the months ahead, lightening the load, being ready for a bit of a pullback, having a few companies on the watch list ready to plow into if the conditions set up. So while the rest of the market's sort of easing off to the year end, you've still got a good game plan running all the way into it. So um, that definitely helps us out. And we should say, for those who have questions, uh, you can add them in the comments below. And Gary, you've been really good to answer and address uh, some of those. And we picked them up in the videos. But we say thanks again for the report you've put through for the week. Gary Glover from Novus Capital. Thanks, Chris. On the right-hand side, we're going to put on screen right now, Gary's playlist where he consistently has these reports. And then also he's mentioned the 30-30 list, which we talk about on Fridays. That's where we picked up the gold companies. Gary noted a lot of them coming in a couple of weeks ago into the launch pad. That was the weekly momentum, and that turned into quarterly momentum. And now they're uh, good trading opportunities on the market. So you can watch Gary go through those on the right-hand side. Also some themes and trading patterns, we should say. VCPs, springs, false breaks, and the like. That pattern's there. And then finally, the left-hand side, Gary's Twitter handle.